That's Aaron there. So um, <coughs> the youth group, we get together after the service, about 12.30 to 1.30. We're done for the season, but we'll see you all in the fall, hopefully. This is Gwyneth, and she's going to sing you a song now as well.
So hopefully we'll see you all in the fall. Bring your music and uh, we'll make some music together. Our, our youth have been involved in a variety of things and today will be a, a very special Sunday for us as we hear about their experience on the mission exposure trip to Cuba just last month. Uh, we'd like to highlight just a few quick announcements for you. Uh, this Tuesday is the start of another series of uh, Living the Questions, which has been a very popular series. It's a great opportunity, and you can come to one or all four, whatever your schedule is going to allow for. And they're on in the afternoon and the evening, and uh, just can't commend them to you enough. So hope you're able to take that in, and please note that they're open to one and all. They draw upon uh, people like Marcus Borg and all sorts of others, sharing their reflections on key topics in the faith. So that's starting this Tuesday. Uh, also, we would note this Friday, we start hosting the monthly Teze worship for the next three months. So Friday at 6 here at the sanctuary, uh, we invite you to come. And again, it's very much open to one and all. It's hosted by the Downtown Churches Association. Uh, we note, uh, too, uh, that we're doing a follow-up to our uh, Loving Your Muslim Neighbor evenings, and that is to have a day tour over to see the mosque in Burnaby. And Naz Riani, who's been in the news le lately, receiving another honor for his uh, good works, uh, is going to be hosting that. Uh, your lunch and the travel on the Lower Mainland is uh, covered and complimentary. Uh, so it's just your uh, ferry uh, ride. But I would note that the number that can get on, there's limited numbers. Uh, it's over half full already, this bus. So if you want to be included, contact the church office ASAP to make sure you're on this really remarkable day event. And I have a, a clipboard here that I'm going to leave just on the side. We're going to be helping host uh, a, a couple of uh, suppers, first Sundays of the month. May and June, we're looking for people who might like to sign up for that. Uh, some will be starting at 4, others at 5, and you finish at 6.30 with helping the preparations. It's for people 18 years and older to, that would like to volunteer. Uh, we have a long, strong associations with that meaningful outreach ministry, and this is one more expression of our support of it. So I commend that to you as well. I'm going to ask uh, Leanne Preswich if she would come forward at this time. Good morning. My name is Leanne Prestwich, and I chair the Ministry and Personnel uh, Committee here at First Met. And uh, today is a day we're just going to recognize someone special in our midst. Can I ask Sharon McDonald to come forward, please? Sharon's face and is a face and voice that many of us will know. Sharon is the, often the first face and the first voice that you see or hear when you contact First Met or walk in our front office. Sharon is our um, administrative assistant and letting coordinator, and Sharon celebrates 15 years at First Met. So we are going to celebrate and recognize Sharon today after the service. Where there's cake and uh, a card if you'd like to sign it in the hall. So come and join us after the service and uh, help Sharon celebrate 15 years at First Met. That sounds well worth celebrating, Sharon. Before we enter into the, the worship time, I just wanted to underline that uh, all of the young people taking part and young adults taking part, they were keeping daily journals during their time in Cuba, and I want them to know that Megami showed me every single thing you wrote, <laughs> and, and that I saw all the pictures. Today, we're going to see highlights of those, which will be marvelous, but I just want to make sure that I said, as I did at 9 o'clock, that it's remarkable, the reflections and uh, the memories that you have been able to uh, uh, pull out of that experience and now to share them with us this morning. So we're in for a, a really uh, meaningful time in worship today with the young people and I'm going to invite Megami to introduce it. Good morning again. 
today you are going to see something very, very different. You can see your cover over here. It says, First Met Youth and Young Adults Cuba Mission Exposure Trip. It's not just a trip. It's a mission exposure trip. What is mission exposure trip? We went to see what's going on our partner churches in Cuba. Almost, many, almost all of you know about Mission and Service Fund. We call them as funds, and that is connected. We collect money for Mission and Service Fund, and not only used in Canada, but it's called or sent to all over the world, our partners. And then they use that money for God's mission. Here is about God's mission, our gifts. Mission and Service Fund, one of the oldest charities in Canada, Mission and Service cannot truly be compared to any other charity because it is much more than a charity. Mission and Service is a church. Mission and Service is a way we as a United Church show our love for people across God's world. We send a message of God's embracing love and acceptance here in Canada to those whose lives are marked by loneliness and rejection. We support the justice work of our partners around the world. And we create new ways of being church in the future by seeding new ideas and new ministries. Mission and service represents our collective way to be God's presence in the world. To be the church, to love and serve, to seek justice, to live with respect in creation. It gives us a collective voice in advocating change, justice, and peace. Whether through the Canadian government or in work with our ecumenical partners, mission and service ensures that we are participating together in all of this work and more in God's mission. Together, the people of the United Church, through our giving to mission service, support the most up-to-date and current expression, our faith. Together, each year, we decide how best to fulfill God's call to show our love for people across God's world. So we went to Cuba to see what's happening in Cuba, how we are connected with Cuban Christians. That is the introduction of our service today. As Steph lights the candle, the Christ candle, we remember the, especially the center, Christian Center for Dialogue and Reflection in Cuba, which is one of the partners we support through the Mission and Service Fund and who hosted our group for the duration of their time in Cuba. And so we remember we are one in Christ, both here and in Cuba. And as the Christ light shines, so too, we are called to let our light shine before others as well. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, how it be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for and ever, ever, amen.
Well, thank you to our children's choir. We too jump for joy with you. And as Roxanne uh, led us in uh, the prayer of Jesus, now Mika will lead us in the invitation to worship. From all corners of the world, from all points on the globe. Young and old, different genders and orientations, rich and poor, close and far. Close to home and far away, listening on our own and acting all together. have children's time and children would you like to come here and just everybody watch look we have new screens here can you see and this was just installed on Thursday so we were a little nervous how it works out but hopefully we pray everything works out well those screens we are using and so all of us together let's do God is good all the time, all the time. we're going to watch something and you're going to be like a dance and let's see the slideshow can you see here maybe you can just go down or both here I'm going to start the Cuba trip so think about you are in Cuba just arrived are you ready <laughs> de mujeres perversas que quieren hacer mi vida de cuadritos me liberé de chicas sin escrúpulos me liberé de Gloria y Socorrito me liberé de Nancy, de Rebeca, de Olga, Adamar y de Lea y de Lizeth me liberé también de Raquel gracias a Dios me liberé me liberé de Mariela y de Fe Liberé de mujeres perversas que quieren hacer mi vida de cuadritos. Me 
liberé de chicas sin escrúpulos, me liberé de Gloria y Socorrito, me liberé de Nancy, de Rebeca, de Olga, de Mari, de Lea y de Lisset, me liberé también de Raquel y Gracias. me liberé de mujeres perversas que quieren hacer mi vida de cuadritos, me liberé de chicas sin escrúpulos, me liberé de Gloria y Socorrito, me liberé de Nancy, de Rebeca, de Olga, de Mari, de Lea y de Lisset, me liberé también. De Raquel, gracias a Dios me liberé, me liberé de Mariela y de fe, gracias al cielo me liberé. Todo día mujeriego no te dejaré vivir en paz, donde quiera que te encuentres de la
for that is our 10 days very quick trip to overview. And thank you to Roxanne Boyle. She made this show. Is it great? <laughs> and we're going to do the children's time now. We have a puppet show. So, Reina, Reina is the youngest member. And Reina, you're going to get puppet from here. Can you get puppet? Good. And she was a wonderful ambassador. She's less than two. And everybody loves to holding Reina. And you saw some of the pictures too. And here, Julian and Imogen has these puppets were purchased. Somebody from our congregation said, use this money. So we are using here to show what's happening. So would you like to go move a little bit this way, everybody? And so you can see the puppet. Yes, that's great. Come this way. My name is Isis. I work at the CCRD, the Christian Center for Reflection and Dialogue in Cardenas, Cuba. I help to run educational programs and outreach help for the elderly. My name is Joseph. I work for youth at the center and was also an interpreter for the group at, for the First Met Church. Isis, can you tell us more about what programs are run through the center? Well, Joseph, every day we deliver meals to the elderly and disabled in Cardenas. Oh yes, the First Met Youth helped us to put those meals together one morning and visited one of the people who visited some of those people who had received those meals. We were all affected by what we saw that day. We also provide nursing support to those people and we run an organic farm which provides fresh food for the center and Meals on Wheels as well as to some schools and other organizations. The farm also grows medicinal plants for treatments as medicine is very hard to get in Cuba. We also went to Los Arabos, a poor community where the church gets support from the CCRD. We visited a farm there too. At CCRD we also run programs for children and youth after school. They come four days a week for two hours. Yes, I teach them English two times a week, and they also learn Spanish literature and of art and dance classes. CCRD offers educational programs to all ages on sexual health, theology, and supports a variety of social, environmental, and health programs. We do all of this with support from overseas, like the United Church Mission and Service Fund. Thank you for telling us about some of what CCRD does. Bye. Thank you, Joseph. Bye-bye. Thank you, Isis and Joseph. Now, name Isis, you wonder. But Isis was born before Isis now, we are talking. So Isis wanted to make sure we know, but her name is Isis, and it spells same way too. So we're going to have uh, music. And Owen, you saw Owen quite often at the show, and he is going to help us and aid them together. We are going to sing all the very familiar songs. So you can see here, we are marching, and you can go like all together. So, ready now? We are marching in the light of God. We are
God of the journey, we are full of gratitude to realize that you are with us wherever we go and whatever happens. Along the way, you offer us new experiences and fresh insights that we might reflect more deeply upon in our lives and the lives of others. Upon the world and the one who created us all, this day we remember especially our partners in Cuba and are grateful for the wonderful hospitality they extended to our youth and adult chaperones during their recent mission trip. May today's worship expand our appreciation of what it means to live following your way, both for our brothers and sisters in Cuba and here at home. And give us grace to always recognize Christ in the faces we see each and every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Today we are reading from Acts 4. 32 through 35, the believers share their possessions. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Matthew 25, 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you in, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is part of our story. Thanks be to God. We have reflections. Please come front. Here, the people who attended youth and young adults, from their journals, you'll hear what the impressions, what they felt. We exit through sliding glass doors, and the first thing that hits me is the air. But not just the warm, fresh breeze that fills my lungs, but also the air of the people around me. You almost feel like you should walk with your head and eyes down, simply because the intensity that each Cuban native carries within their open-eyed, wandering gaze. It was this state of present consciousness that was the biggest initial shock factor for me. With a growing curiosity of what lied ahead of me, we are soon rushed off by Megami to an isolated, run-down, dirty sky blue school bus. With, with a what of must looked ridiculous grin, I snapped a photo and skipped up the bus stairs, all too aware of our bus driver staring intently at me and everything. I nervously kept my grin and looked, and looked the driver right in his eyes and gave him a nod. His curious eyes broke into a smile that enveloped, that enveloped his whole face and I, and I head to the, to the back of the bus and feel as if I've just received the first secret of the Cuban people. The first secret into eternal presence with the world and our lives.
March 14th was an exceptional day, as it was the day where I felt we first really connected with a group of Cuban people, and as a result, the first time I feel I truly realized the significance of the opportunity that this trip gave us. I had not slept well the previous night, partly the heat, the excitement and overstimulation, but also the sound, the air conditioning, fan, and most of all, the sound of the outdoor street. Dogs barking, people talking and shouting, horse hooves clamoring, trucks and cars whooshing by, all disorienting to a dozing mind. At this point, I could not imagine how much I would miss it upon our return, how I would lie in bed our first night in Victoria with my ears pounding from the sudden and absolute silence. The visit to the church in Los Erebos was the first, although certainly not the last, time on this trip where I felt we truly connected with and began to understand, rather than solely observed, Cuban people and their issues and experiences. Meeting the people from the church was heartwarming. They were so extraordinarily welcoming and hospitable. But as well as being welcoming in their actions, they seemed to truly appreciate our presence and were completely committed to connecting with us, an attitude which is, in my opinion, far too often lacking in people when they have opportunities to engage with others in meaningful ways. One particular moment that stands out to me from this visit is in a conversation I overheard. A woman from the church was talking about how, upon receiving the prayer patches we distributed to the congregation, she felt a presence come over her, and she no longer felt alone. She was in tears talking about this, how for much of her life she had felt very alone. The fact that a simple gift from us can make such a profound difference to an individual defines for me what the trip was about and proves how absolutely committed to engaging us with us that congregation was. Let me just say, this trip has officially exceeded all of my expectations. Every day is great, but today really stands out as a day that I know has been life-changing. The day began with breakfast and preparations for the Meals on Wheels project, which was not too difficult. Once we finished preparing the meals, we got onto the bus and drove around Cardenas to help deliver the meals and visit the recipients. It was really an amazing experience, and every person had a different impact on me. But the one that stood out the most was a young man in his 20s. This man had cere severe cerebral palsy and virtually no medical care. Walking into his home and seeing him and his ability to still have a smile on his face was truly incredible. However, what stood out to me the most was his, was his mother. She is a former nurse who has quit her job to care for her son. And I find it so beautiful yet heartbreaking that her entire life is about keeping her son alive. This experience really makes you take a step back and realize how lucky you are and I think it is definitely something I will never forget. After we finished up with the Meals on Wheels, we had a short debriefing and headed to lunch. After lunch, we once again hopped on the bus and drove to a nearby children's brain clinic. I found this so interesting, especially learning about how they use animals for therapy and rehabilitation purposes. Today, I met a boy. This boy was not much older than me. I liked him. He lived alone with his mother, and they lived together in a small two-room house. His mother used to be a nurse, but when she had the boy, she left her job to take care of him. When we met the boy, he was home. We entered his house through a windowless room illuminated by a single light bulb, suspended by a single wire. We walked past barren walls, once painted brightly, now gray. I saw a wheelchair as I entered. When I saw the boy, he was, he was in bed. He was thin yet muscular. He had thick brown hair and skin the color of fresh coffee. But he could not stand. He could not walk. He could not control any limb in his body. He lay in his bed like a broken marionette tangled in his own strings. And in a sense, he was. I looked at the boy, and he looked at me. 
I saw into his eyes, and he into mine. I looked at him, and he smiled, a great big happy smile, more full of joy than I, any I had ever seen, and I cried. Reflections. Now we'll sing together him. Receive offerings. During the offering, we have another reflections and slides. Our first full day in Cuba was filled with presentations from staff at the CRD about the founding of the center, some history of Cuba, and other information about life in Cuba. It was very interesting. It helped me understand some, about, some of the hardships and the way of life in Cuba. It was, different, it was difficult to acclimatize to the heat, but we were all running on adrenaline. And by the end of the day, um, it was really fun 
the locals trying to teach us how to dance the cha-cha and salsa. It was quite funny to watch the difference in how we couldn't seem to dance quite the way they did. One day, after a breakfast of bananas, pineapple, and chicken hot dogs, we walked over to the Wanji Hall Church, where we did the service and attempted to sing along to some of their Spanish songs. We gave out the prayer patches and Canadian flags, and we, we got the opportunity to eat an amazing meal with some of their church community. We ate a rice and bean dish, a, a potato and cheese dish, lots of fruit and tomatoes. It was delicious and amazing. Lunch was followed by an introduction and questionnaire. After we ate, most of the youth stood around the piano and sang while Alec played the piano. It was very fun. After we said goodbye, we went to a cave and saw lots of bats and very old drawings on the walls, which was followed by a trip to the Veradero Beach. The water was not too cold, not too warm, but just right. One day, we went to another city of Cuba named Matandes. Seems like this city is richer than gardeners. The city has many people, the street was crowded. Everyone was very busy. The road was very narrow. We parked, we parked our bus on the road. I think it is because they do not have a park place. We went to a very beautiful place. They had many plants and a big church. My cousin played piano in that church. The lunch was very nice, especially the juice. And in the evening, we went to a big cave. It is 22 meters deep. It's very cold there, and the water is deep blue. I was afraid at the cave. I felt like I would sink and I would die. So I was sitting on a rock and watching people. It was a good day, but also an amazing day. Good night. I enjoyed every single day there, but Tuesday the 17th was one of my favorites. We started off the day driving to CCRD's farm where they grow all the food we ate there. After eating CCRD's food the whole week, I thought it was very interesting seeing how and where they grew it. For an hour or two, we picked the lettuce and carrots, and I also had the chance to see how they picked and cleaned the cabbage we had eaten every night. After the farming, they fed us lunch and we had a tour around the farm. In the afternoon, we stopped by the center to put on our bathing suits and went to the beach we always went to in Veradero. After dinner, we met the Cuban girls at the castle across the street. It was so much fun. We, had, we all had sodas and they taught us more Cuban dances. March 16th. March 16th. We had Meals on Wheels. We started by making food, then got into a nice air-conditioned white van and drove to someone's house. He was a 92-year-old man, very lonely, and he had plastic bags as socks. Then, when we came to another house and saw an old woman in a rocking chair, she was speaking in Spanish, and Joseph, our gracious translator, wasn't translating because it was gibberish. She had Alzheimer's, and from what I could tell, it was pretty serious. The next house was worse. There was a boy in bed who had cerebral palsy. His mother was so grateful that we were bringing his food. His mother dedicated her life to keeping her son alive. My mom's work is helping someone with spinal muscular atrophy, and that person has machines, entertainment, and a crew of multiple people to help her. And mom saves her life on a regular basis. I can only imagine what it would be like for the boy's mom. Later, at the Christian, at the children's brain clinic, one of the highlights was the tour guide showed us an image of three toddlers with disabilities holding a baby crocodile with its mouth taped shut on their laps. They certainly wouldn't use crocs as therapy animals in Victoria. Now, today is another day for the bringing for the Lenten offering. This Lenten offering goes to Sudan for youth, for peace uh, study, peace conference, to bring peace in Sudan. We're going to have a dedication. Thank you. 
we're going to have a, a prayers of the people. Just beforehand, I wanted to acknowledge and remembering Noah Cowden. The flowers there is a remembrance of Noah. If he were with us, he should be nine years old today. So celebrating his birthday here. We'll continue our prayers. This one is each one of them, the highlight of their trip. I felt that the Meals on Wheels service trip, that's the one where we met the boy with uh, cerebral palsy, was the most meaningful of the time we spent in Cuba. Seeing how the people lived and hearing the elderly men talk about how they were in the war or the revolution was truly life-changing. I was fascinated by the vast cultural and, so, and political differences between here and Cuba. Um, one of the most interesting things for me was looking at all the propaganda signs that lined the streets and said things like, the revolution is, invis is invincible and socialism or death, or socialism is the seed of humanity. I also found it interesting to see how the political situation impacted people's daily lives and also impacted the church. Isabel is the only one who could understand Spanish. I loved meeting the people, how we were able to see so much while we were there, the many good experiences that we had at the clinic, the churches, the farms, how they helped the poor through so many programs, the interaction of the youth with the Cuban youth, amazing. As a nurse, I found it absolutely inspiring to see people who were so well educated, who had all the tools in their brain for being doctors and nurses, but had nothing in their hands to use to give their people care. So from that, there was so much ingenuity where they made things out of nothing, and they grew herbs and used those as their medicines. They were really remarkable. Um, my favorite part was making friendships with the youth in Cardenas. We all had a really hard time communicating with each other because we couldn't speak Spanish and they couldn't speak English but somehow we understood each other and hopefully there'll be friendships for life. Uh, the people I met in Cuba um, made the experience what it was for me. They helped show me all the good things about Cuba and appeared to always be living in the moment, present in the moment. And I found that very important in aspects that I could take away from myself back to, back to Canada. And um, I feel without it, uh, I wouldn't have been able to take the next step into finding myself. So thank you, Cuba. I love meeting all of the people. I love seeing how they lived and how they worshiped at the churches. I love meeting and getting to know Joseph and getting to see all the aspects of their culture, culture. I loved meeting the girls and boys and getting to know them, seeing them give thanks to the Canadian youth when they have so little themselves. One experience that stood out to me was when a young girl I met, I said that I liked her earrings and she removed them from her ears and handed them to me as a gift. It was amazing seeing how they can offer things to us when they have so little. Even though the people are poor, they shared so much with us. It made me feel sad to see the hardships they have to bear. The meals on Wales home visits were very hard for me to see. 
Even if we didn't speak the same language, the people of Cuba were always trying to communicate with us, no matter how hard it was. They always tried to say hello or make conversation. I returned to Canada filled with inspiration to witness the people of the CCRD, the Children's Brain Clinic, and the churches in the area, with so few resources step up to meet the needs of their community. Of all the experiences and people that I met in Cuba, the lasting impression that I'll have from our trip is all the warmth and generosity that I felt from all of the Cuban people. It was incredible. It was amazing. I was so impressed with the Christians in Cuba overcoming all the hardships and the strength of the people. The way Christian Center for Reflection and Dialogue has learned to work with the situation government so they can do their work, God's mission. So I'm gonna go off script right now, because it's what I do. And uh, Megami, as you can see, has had us like a well-oiled army, Cuban army, uh, doing everything. She has had us here at eight o'clock this morning. We've been here in the evening times, rehearsing and getting ready to do this. And I think she did a remarkable job. But what I want to say is that Megami is a force of one. She was our fearless leader through the whole event before we went and since we've come back. She was there fighting every moment to make sure that we had a fantastic experience and that I just want to say from all of us, and we would all do our number uh, maybe to let you know that we were, we were all present and correct on the bus before the bus left or wherever we were, so she wouldn't lose us, because she knew that if she did, she'd be in trouble when she got home. But I want our 1 to 14 group, uh, that minus Megami, all to give a round of applause to Megami, our fearless leader. So now, I would like you all to join me in prayer. O oh, loving and caring God, we thank you for the abundance of blessing that we are so fortunate to have living here in Victoria in our, in our country, Canada. We so often take for granted the clean air that we breathe the crystal clean water that we are able to drink each day straight from our taps. There is always an abundance of food for us to eat and we have no need to be hungry. We are living in a country that allows us to speak openly about our concerns and a vote that is ours to use freely. Caring Spirit, we thank you for our recent trip to Cuba with the youth of this church. We are so grateful for the Christian Center of Reflection and Dialogue in Cardenas. We pray for the caring and dedicated staff who work tirelessly and selflessly helping so many people in their community and beyond. They have learned to trust in you, God, and your love, and through ingenuity and hard work, have created a remarkable center where they provide Meals on Wheels, medical care, and educational support. By using herbs they grow in the farm, they substitute these as a holistic medicine because there are they are rarely able to obtain generic medication. We saw the true meaning of Christian values being modeled each day through the work that they do. We are so grateful 
for the United Church Mission and Service Fund that has been a key component in the funding and support for this project. May they be supported with your love and guidance to continue this work. We are so grateful for the youth of this church who showed true love and caring during their time in Cuba. They showed those in Cuba that they cared about what was happening to them, especially the youth they met. May you open their hearts to do future service with their lives both at home and overseas. Dear God, across this world there are millions of people in need of our prayers, the people of Syria and Yemen, and the other conflict zones areas in the Middle East. We pray for a solution that will bring peace to this region. We also pray for the people of Ukraine, where they continue to struggle for their country's sovereignty. We give thanks for the thousands of volunteers and medical staff who have brought the Ebola epidemic under control. We pray now for the thousands of children who are orphaned and who need our help. May the international community support them in this time of pain and great need. We also want to hold people in our own community in our prayers. We remember Noah on this day that would have been his birthday. We pray, pray for Claire Hunter, for Darlene Inglis, for Ruth Mannix, and for Stephanie's brother Eric, who recently had surgery. And we pray for the family of William Hoskins in their time of loss. And in a moment of silence, may we hold silent prayer for our own loved ones and those that we have concerns about. May we walk in the light of God and offer a hand up to those who need help. As Christians, we need to follow in Jesus' example and love our neighbor as ourself. Amen.
just before we close, I want to express on behalf of us all our appreciation to the youth, the young adults, and the adults who have shared with us their remarkable experiences and stories from their time in Cuba. And I invite the congregation to join with me in showing our appreciation this morning. And I'm going to ask uh, all of the youth and the young adults and adults that were in Cuba, uh, after our postlude, would you come and join me at the back of the church to greet people who are leaving that way? But we hope most of the people are actually going to go that direction. And once we've greeted there, we'll all go join them in the hall and have a chance for a whole bunch of one-on-one -on -one conversations because I'm sure there's many people here who have questions they want to ask you. So hope everyone can stay for, for that opportunity. And just a one last update, uh, a way to respond to uh, the call to uh, be of help to the poor in our own city. Uh, we're helping with the suppers at our place, and an update, ages 15 and up can help. So if you can sign up and make sure you put your uh, email address there so we can follow up with a, a contact for the arrangements for that. Now we're going to invite Kat to dismiss us with the blessing. With our sisters and brothers in Cuba, Cuba, may you run with the energy that comes from Christ. As an Easter people, make God's will happen. Remembering Christ is always among us. Lift each other up and share with both near and far the new life that is within you. The peace of God be with you. Amen.